I'm excited to be uh, uh, here helping support uh, FAO's ATIO uh, Ag Technology and Innovation Outlook Initiative and I think it's a really crucial time for FAO to get much more actively involved in the whole area of science and technology and the way it can contribute to uh, economic development and livelihood improvements worldwide. Um, I tracked investments in the food and agricultural research area for my career uh, and uh, the sense is that we're at a, at a, a real watershed moment with, res with respect to uh, science and technology policy. We've got a big shift in who's carrying out that research, uh, the increasing role of the private sector and so we need a rethink with respect to the public sector as to how they can creatively engage with the private sector to pr promote innovation uh, and technical change in agriculture. Uh, we've got a big shift in the geography of where agricultural research takes place. Uh, there's a huge growth in uh, research in large agricultural economies like Brazil and India and China and so a substantial shift of the research to the Asia Pacific and uh, uh, upper middle income countries has occurred over the last few decades so uh, I think that's happening at the same time we've got uh, signs of faltering productivity growth in agriculture and so a real need to double down on R&D investments and, and build a, a consensus around revitalising investments in this space. Uh, the FAO being actively involved can start converting dialogue into action and, and policy choices, both by the public and private sectors. Um, and I think this faltering productivity growth is happening at a time where we also have increasing pressures on the agricultural landscape and the, and the food system in general. Um, Sub-Saharan Africa is uh, still a rapidly growing part of the planet, but also a rapidly urbanising part of the planet. And so we've got lengthening supply chains. A lot of the food is moving off the farm uh, along supply chains into urban markets. And so that changes the dynamics of the types of innovations that's needed in the food and ag system to putting still a lot of emphasis on production agriculture, but increasing the investing in food processing and food logistics and things of that nature. Um, we also have clearly lots of climate change challenges uh, that are affecting agriculture and agriculture is both a, a source of the problems in climate change but it's a, a, an opportunity for, for solutions. Uh, but again that's going to require rethinking agricultural innovation to have more sustainable production practices which uh, adds even further to the need for, for much more investment in this space. There's uh, been a lot of work by disparate professionals around the world with respect to, to uh, investments in uh, food and agricultural research. Uh, my sense is uh, FAO through its ATIO initiative can really play a catalytic role to, to, to bring all of those threads of efforts together and contribute from within the organisation but I think fostering a sort of uh, data and uh, evidence informed uh, debate uh, and conversation about not just the amount of investments in food and agricultural research but the types of investments that are required. Uh, and particularly given this sort of unfortunately growing global divide that I see in the evidence between the scientific haves and the scientific have-nots. So whilst the, the, the upper middle income countries and the, and the richer countries have got substantial investments in this space, the lower income countries are not only stagnating but they're actually falling behind. So I think it, it's a, a, a special role that FAO can play to really focus attention on those parts of the world and those people uh, who really need support uh, in terms of improved productivity performance and safer food supply systems and things of that nature.